Hello and welcome back to another thrilling installment of Niche Radio with your two favourites, Owen Duncan and... Connell Taylor. Hello. Hello. Uh, today we've got a fun pack show full of the newest merchandise, tons of Serenity and Firefly blurb, a uh, roundup of all the new things happening in the geeky scene around the world and in Manchester. So please buckle your seatbelts and stay tuned for some rock and roll, mother lovers. Hiya, so uh, welcome to Niche Radio everyone. If you're a first time listener, you're very lucky because um, we're going to be all up in your ear holes. And uh, yeah, there's been tons of stuff happening this week. In fact, there's been tons of stuff happening today in uh, in geekiness. But we'll get into all that later on. First of all, how are you, Connell? Me? Well, I'm, I'm sad to say I'm terrible, Owen. Really? I am. Well, I always thought you were a terrible Owen, but how are you at being Connell? I had a, I had a, a horrible experience last night. Or rather, I missed out on a wonderful opportunity. Oh dear. Last night um, in the bar working, some of the lads from View Cinema came in and said, oh, we're gonna go see uh, The Avengers tonight. No, you're not, it's not out yet. Oh, we've got a special staff viewing. Do you wanna come? What? Yeah, yeah, um, it starts at midnight. Um, bit of trailers, get out. If you get out at midnight, you can uh, come see it at about quarter past midnight. So you could have gone and see The Avengers like earlier than everyone else last night I could have gone at midnight and I had to stay and work till one because it was so busy oh lame me, me and my good friend Coops got very excited started we got loads out of the way and then realised at about quarter to midnight we're an hour and a half off oh uh, so I, I smashed everything <clears throat> in sight oh you see yesterday uh, the assistant manager from work uh, went to see the uh, one of the previews at 7.30 in Ashton um, with some other competition winners from Forbidden Planet I don't know how he won the competition I'm not no. going to ask, sounds like a conspiracy theory to me but yeah, yeah, I've not seen it yet either and I'd like to, I'd like to quite a lot yes, we well apparently because I couldn't go see it I might have some free tickets oh, which yeah. I would give out as a competition but I don't want to and I'm going to go hmm, good plan um, <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow? Um, do you want to go see Age of Ultron? I would quite like to see Age of Ultron. I've got the day off, so I'm just going to be rolling around like a G. Like a G. Probably. I'm not really sure how one rolls around like a G, but I'll find out tomorrow. There's lots There's lots of bends in them. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. G's, G's are very... roll like an eight. Yeah. Oh, eight. So Infinitely. <laughs> oh, so, hello, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for tuning in to another thrilling installment of Niche Nights. Uh, Niche Radio. And, um, yeah... First up, let's talk about all the new merch that is uh, that has come into Le Shop, because there's loads. Um, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview because you know we can't we can't blow our load on the first day. You've got to come into the shop and have a little peruse and find all the stuff that I haven't mentioned because that's the fun part. I like having a browse. Anyway, what's new in FP? What's new? What's new? What's new in Forbidden Planet? So, what is new in Forbidden Planet? Well, let's let's tell you over a nice ice cold beverage. They're not ice cold. N- okay, nice lukewarm. It's pretty chilly. It's yeah, it's refreshing. Mmm, beer. Ah, keeping Owen young since 1843. Um, yeah, so, new stuff. There's been loads, uh, and you have to come in, especially manga stuff. There's been tons and tons of new manga merch, um, including loads of Naruto necklaces, One Piece bracelets, wallets, um, purses, just tons and tons and tons, including loads of mugs. So if you're looking for a present for anybody who's into manga, we've got Dragon Ball mugs, Death Note, Bleach... Uh, all of all of the biggest names really and uh, loads of Attack on Titan merch as well um, and also we've had tons and tons of the Attack on Titan manga back in stock we now have 20 of every single volume because we were just we were selling out first that we can get them in so now there's tons so if anyone's missing any of the Attack on Titan volumes then please come into the store as soon as possible Forbidden Planet on Oldham Street in Manchester because there is tons of stuff especially for you <coughs> yeah and um 
In comics, well, the, the new comics came out today after a slight hiccup where they weren't actually delivered yesterday when they should have been. So they were frantically shoved out on the shelves today. Um, and uh, there were tons and tons of cool ones, but the ones I'm going to pick on are uh, Star Wars Issue 4, DC's new, t- uh, new event, Convergence Issue 3, and Buffy Issue 14. Also, the unbeatable Squirrel Girl Issue 4 with an awesome kind of 90s computer game pixelated pastiche cover. Um, and yeah, and also Halo es- Escalation uh, came out. There were tons more, but you have to go into the shop to find out because I ran out of time to write a decent list. I'll, I'll level with you. I'm not going to lie to you guys. We've been through too much together. Um, but yeah, but there is plenty in. Uh, tons and tons of new stuff. And uh, also all new X-Men issue 40 has come out. Usually I wouldn't mention this because there's a lot of the X-Men titles and they come out most weeks. But talking of coming out, in uh, this particular all new X-Men, one of the original X-Men comes out. Oh. Uh, well, we'll save that for later. It could be a mystery. But yeah, it's, it's, we've been having so many people ring up trying to bag the, the issues just because, uh, well, I, w- I would assume because a, a fairly famous character comes out as gay, which, uh, yeah, which is it is not unusual in the comic world now. It's it's good, it's good that they're sort of evening the scores a little bit because before, comics are kind of famous for everyone being white, heterosexual, and probably white republic. Um, yeah. So there, yeah, so that came out as well. And there's been tons and tons and tons of new comics as well. Uh, but yeah, pop into the shop anytime. Say hello to us. We're very friendly. And uh, without further ado, should we put on some competition time? Because it feels like it's probably time for a competition. This week's competition time, we have instead of a competition, a question. Ooh. It's question to us in time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we might uh, change uh, competition time into a new feature, which we need to pull a few bits together first. So it might start in about a month, six weeks' time. Mm-hmm. But what we want to do is an independent comic book review or anything independent which fits into uh, this group anyone who's listening to the show anyone who <coughs> might have come to any of our nights um, anyone in the sci-fi community in Manchester and beyond who does anything for example a guy got in touch about a comic book app he's making mm. so we're going to sort that out and have that as one of our reviews in one of our segments um, brilliant stuff we've got a few people who've written comics so to give them a bit of free exposure to Hopefully, our tens of billions of listeners. We're going to talk about them. If you have anything you've written or know of anyone who's writing a comic or doing anything, making a little short film, making tasty geeky burgers, tasty I'd love to geeky re- burgers. I'd love to review some burgers. I'd like to review some burgers. Mm-hmm. Anything like this. If you know anyone, if you're doing so yourself, send us a message. Um, ideally on Twitter, because they they get read the most. They should. Um, but yeah. It would be really good to get a few things in. We've already got a a small handful, like Jeremy Beadle's hand full of stuff. <laughs> Not my hand. No, you've got big hands. Big I, hands for a big man. Yes. You stallion. Ridiculously small penis, though. <laughs> Is that how it works out? You know, it's a bit of yin and yang, you know, kind of karmic. Karmic balance of bodily parts. Yeah. Yeah, well, I yin bet you can... wang. <laughs> <laughs> but wang. yeah, um... So, if you're if you're uh, writing a comic, no one who does, please get in touch. Um, you'll see some of our posters over the next few weeks if you go into Forbidden Planet or the yeah. other one on Alden Street. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, and it's it's a lovely opportunity for us to read some stuff that we may not have otherwise read or been exposed to, uh, and to chat about it on air and and whatnot, and hopefully promote your thing. Unless we think it's rubbish, in which case we'll be not promoting it. But you know, we won't we won't say that. Will we? we'll, we'll be nice. We'll never give bad reviews. Because you know, people just say no. Maybe come back to us. Actually, no. We, maybe we should. Well, no. But what if we? You know, what if we read it and it was? I don't know. For example, something that's a, a bit of a bugbear. Horrendously racist. 
then perhaps we'd be like, well, you know, I like the, the drawing of those all those Nazi flags. You know, the, the red really stuck out. You know, we'd have to draw a line somewhere. We can't be nice to everyone. And good point. I take that back entirely. I will give honest reviews. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they're not paying us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we would love, I mean, genuinely, we would love to, to read some new comics and, and see some new media in general. And then, yeah, and hopefully uh, give it a little exposure on the show to, you know, our 10 billion uh, listeners. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Mm. So far, we have three comics and one app. So we're trying to get together about 20, and then we'll start doing it. So in about a month's time, I guess, mm. start doing that. So get them in soon if you want to appear soon, because we're already building up a small collection. Yeah, I've, I've even got a couple of people in mind that want to approach about it and say, Oi, let us review your stuff, yo. Um, yeah, I reckon that would be a lot of fun. I think so, too. Well, talking of fun, what about an update on Niche Night's events? Because, you know, there's tons of cool ones, right? There are. Yeah, there are. Three legendary Knights of Niche bring to you events full of fun, gaming, and competitions at Niche Nights. So, what is new in the the niche nights? Well, there's tons and tons of cool events coming up in Manchester for geeks, sci-fi lovers, or people who just love to get drunk and have a boogie. Uh, so, like me, and me, I like it too. There's been a fresh, fresh, brand new one announced: Tokyo Chips. The next one with uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but um, it's that one. It's that one. Yeah, one of those Studio Ghibli ones. Uh, an absolute classic and lovely. And I haven't seen it very for a very long time. Hence I've, not being able to remember the name of it properly. I've not seen it. Um, <clears throat> I like The thing I like about Tokyo Chipped is the films because there's never been one they've played which I had seen before. It's not really my forte. And every one I've seen, I've loved, especially the last one. That blew my mind. Oh, uh, yeah, awesome. Ghost in the Show. I love The Matrix and that sort of... Uh, are you awake? Are you asleep? Is it a dream reality, computer reality, different plane of existence anything type of genre film mm. and to read about it after which I did and read that that was the inspiration for the Matrix and a lot more after that I guess a lot for the Animatrix as well mm. especially with the um, I think it's the fifth episode of the Animatrix where that girl goes into the house and uh, yeah there's all like the weird bits like floaty bits glitches in the Matrix yeah it was very yeah. similar to that film so it was absolutely awesome full full respect to MYK Mike for yeah. all his choosing Faultlessly great films. Yeah, and also there's some flawlessly great chip tune acts as well. We have the incredible Jewel, and also Hardy Likes Music makes a triumphant return after touring pretty much everywhere in the world recently. Um, yeah, and so. Pakistan. Probably. We'd have to ask him. So you've got to come to Tokyo Chipped, everyone. Uh, and that is on the 11th of June, if I'm not mistaken. I've been mistaken before. Could be. I haven't written it down. That's just out of my, out of my noggin, that is. I'll trust you. Okay. But, you know, if you're so interested that you are actually going to come, I would recommend checking it out on Facebook. Um, because on the Facebook, you can um, you can actually see if I'm wrong or not. <laughs> Connell's giggling at me because I say, come. If you're so interested, you're going to come. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I can't wait to see this film. Ladies and gentlemen, Tokyo Chip is that good. Which is why you have to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We do have some laughs, don't we? Also, nineties night is coming up um, uh, soon. That's going to be the first Thursday of next month at Tiger Lounge, which will be a blast. If you like any kind of nineties tunes, be it nineties grunge, nineties pop punk, or just nineties straight out cheese, we're going to have some R and B as well. Last flavor, last flavors. Tuesday. Yes, exactly. And then we'll have all the cheesy pop, everything from S Club to more S Club. Um, Will you be playing any S Club? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about it, yeah. Will five make me get down? Uh, now, they will, yeah. Will Backstreet's back? They'll, they'll be, back. be back. Yeah, they'll be back. Yeah, Backstreet's back will be back. Um, well, it's, it's not on a Saturday <coughs> night, is it? It is on Saturday night. I like the way you move, pretty baby. Um, also, uh, we'll be playing lots of 90s, but also we'll be playing ooh, uh, just a little bit of uh, Gene and G 
I hope I don't get drunk and start a fight because some people say I fight like my dad. <laughs> now that was your best accent to date. That was brilliant. <laughs> Big up to the Bewitched Massive. I'll try to go see them once in recent years and uh, ended up missing them even though we were sat in the same venue as them. Yeah, that was, I was distracted. There was the, there were girls in hot tubs in a venue. Yeah, that was that was neat. It was, it was odd. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem like the place for a hot tub, does it? You know, usually that's a private thing. You know, in the jacuzzi. Well, so nice we went relax. to metal detectors when we went in, just in case we had guns. Did we? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Maybe it was because they were an Irish band. <laughs> Felt like we dad as well. <laughs> <laughs> With guns, apparently. <laughs> a jewel like my dad as well. Um, mm. Apologies to any Irish or Northern Irish listeners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our accents are really bad, let alone our bad stereotypes. Um... Yeah, that's completely derailed me now. I just all I can all I can think of is uh, is uh, 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 uh. I just want to play that song now. But because we're going to put this on YouTube later on, we're not allowed because the YouTube uh, copyright Nazis will come down on us like a ton of copyright Nazis. They are terrible swines. They are. Why can't we just have all the media for free and not pay any royalties to anyone that deserves them? I know. If you're listening, to YouTube, this is what I have. To... <laughs> Eep. There. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. That was uh, a bit of vocal censorship there, courtesy of O Dunkster. I've got nothing else. They just look at me, Connell. You meant you meant to pitch in when I'm floundering. Maybe we should uh, start. Uh, what's Owen wearing this week? What is he wearing Section. today? I will be mostly wearing <laughs> <laughs> Geek Night Three T-shirts. Yeah, it's it's the amazing Twisted Dreads. Well, they're all Twisted Dreads, but this one it was particularly great because he got the likenesses of Buffy Summers. Um, Captain Hammer. Oh, in fact, no, it's sorry, Captain Mal from Firefly and Doctor Horrible on it. And there's also a little Lawn and a little Jane wearing his little Jane hat. That was a good night. It was a good night. Yeah, man. Peace. <laughs> Church. <laughs> Church. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies and gents, thank you very much for tuning in to Niche Radio on Fab Radio International for the geekiest show that will ever blow your mind um, right now. Uh, if you're listening on Tinternet, thank you very much for listening live. And if you're listening on Tinternet in the future, thank you very much for listening in the future. Uh, if anybody wants to get in touch, which we would love you to do, please get on our Facebook, which is Niche Nights, or at Niche Radio on Twitter, or uh, comment on any of our videos on YouTube. We're also Niche Nights on there, and it would be lovely to hear from you, because we can have a bit of a banter about this. That would be fun. But yeah, everyone like wants to get friends. in touch on uh, YouTube. That'd be really handy. We've got a few people coming up. Well, a few shout-outs for people who've got in touch on YouTube and chosen our Who'd Win in the Fight section, as well as a bit about what to talk about later. So if anyone does want to have any input in our show, YouTube seems to the way. Comment on our last show, and we'll talk about it on the next one. Cool. Um, and yeah, because this is all about your community, all about your community of geeks, and we're just the, the beautiful, sexy, chisel figureheads. <laughs> And modest. We're ever so. Let's do a quiz. 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 So we're going to quiz it up, yo. This is the part of the show where we do a quiz. Um, didn't know if you realised that, but it's going to be a quiz. So I've got five questions for you. Um, I'm going to run through them all. I'm going to ask five questions. Owen's going to gesture vocally whether he knows the answers or not. Uh, and then we're going to play the quiz theme again. And then I'll run through them again with the answers. And test Owen. Owen has yet to get all five answers out of five. Um, yeah, don't rub it in. If he gets all five out of five, he gets to play <laughs> the Final Fantasy Seven victory theme. Could it happen today? Could it? Probably not. I'll decide. You will. In fact, I need to cue that up because I'm feeling I'm feeling promising today. I feel like I've got the knowledge up in my grill. I think you might actually. It's, um, I kind of designed it towards you a bit. Really? That's really nice of you. Well, I felt bad for you being so poor. In I'm, yeah, I'm pretty bad at them usually. Uh, quizzes. So, question one. Ah, ah. Okay. Okay. I'm cool. I'm with it. I'm good. Hit me. Question one. In the Little Mermaid, who does Eric? F- 
Damn. Who does <laughs> uh, who does Eric um, have and fall in love with? Ah, okay, I think I know that one. That one was red wrong. <laughs> um, so in the Little Mermaid, ways, it seemed like it. Uh, Eric um, had someone fall in love with him and then fell in love with her later. Who was it? <laughs> okay, All right. I, I think I've got a rough idea of this. I think anyone who's lived may have an idea of that one. Hmm. Question two: In Pokemon, oh right, okay. At I level six, I aced the last one, didn't I? That you last did. Pokemon question last week. Oh, I was all over it like a. Like a, a voraciously growing shrub. This is why I'm curious about this one because at level six, Squirtle evolves into War Turtle. At level thirty-seven, what is the next evolution? Oh wow! Now that's a that's a puzzleroo. That's a right old melon scratcher. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'll give that some thought. Question three: In which film did Hoban Wash die? Oh, I, I definitely know that one. And oh, how could you? Shot through the heart, and you're to blame. I might point out that it was on a hun- uh, script page 107. My favourite script page. Why? Um, because I, I really like the number 107. Mm. It's the number of times I've watched you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Question four: <laughs> Name the fifth Doctor Who, the fifth incarnation of Doctor Who. What was his name? Oh, fifth. Oh. That's not the fourth, it's not the sixth, it's between them, it's the fifth. It's, um, you know what, I think, I think I've got that one down. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Also, I'm not going to accept the Doctor. Ah, oh, <laughs> crud. Question five. What about Mr. Who? Like, before he gets his doctorate? He never got a doctorate. Well, actually, I suppose he did, but that's not why he's called a Doctor. <laughs> Question five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why did the writers of the, well, the writer of the X-Files, Chris Carter... Give Fox Mulder his first name. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I'll make something up when it comes to the answers. Okay. Oh, here's the answers now. That was a quick five questions. I feel like I've barely even thought about them. Let's put on this thing. Quiz. 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 Quiz, 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 quiz. Hmm. So this is part of the show where we do a quiz. If Question got, one. Whoa, you guys are, deja vu. If you guys are, are, are following at home, uh, this isn't the time to mark your scores. If you got them all right, please write on a wall. I got them all right. And if you got them all right and I didn't, feel free to comment. I'm better than Owen. Uh, so should we should we proceed? You can. Nobody's better than Owen. Question one. Oh, um, I asked wrong. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I failed. Question one. In The Little Mermaid, who did Eric... Er, someone fell in love with Eric and... Who did he fall in love who with? Who did he then later fall in love with? I think it was Ariel. It was. Mm. The question was going to be, obviously, who did Ariel fall in love with? And you know, I probably wouldn't have got that, to be honest. I couldn't remember his name. I mean, all, they're all like random Prince Charmings, aren't they? Oh, Gaston. I remember him. He was cool. Yeah, that's fair. But he was a baddie. So, yeah. yeah. So, it was Ariel. So, ding, ding! Uno Question pointo. two. Scorchia. In Pokemon, <clears throat> at level six, Squirtle evolves into War Turtle. Who does he evolve into at level 37, when he hits for level 37? Um, I think I know this one. Although I do get the uh, ev- evolvings of, of Squirtle and Bulbasaur a bit confused, but I think it's Blastoise. Can I have a drum roll, please? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, question three. Squirtle's my favourite Pokemon. Which film did Hope and Wash die? It was Serenity. It was. Which we'll be talking about later on because it's boss. And, it is. And we've got news about it as well. You like a bit of news, don't you? Especially when it's about Serenity, yeah. which is rare, obviously, because it's old. It's so yeah. super old. Brown coat, not wearing a shirt. Yeah. Question That's four. What doing. Name the fifth Doctor. The fifth incarnation of Doctor Who was played by... Peter Davidson. Oh, come on. Give me another chance. It was Peter Davidson. Oh, 
yes, yes. Uh, from March 1981 Thank to March 1984, <clears throat> Peter Davison, you are correct. I was honoured with the and, title, and, the Doctor, and then it was Colin Baker, right? Yes. Oh, mate, I've got it down. It's all this work at Forbidden Planet. I went there knowing very little about Doctor Who, and uh, after four years there, I. I still know very little about Doctor Who, but at least I know which order they're in. Ish. Well done. Thanks. Question five. Why did the writer of X-Files, Chris Carter, give Fox Mulder his first name? I'll say originally when they wrote the whole of the first series, he was called... It was something really bland. I can't remember what. Like, Owen or Brian or something boring like that. <laughs> and then they changed it to Fox <clears throat> for a particular reason. What was it? Hmm. <laughs> Is, that's a puzzle though do you want, um, do you want a, a small interlude of a song while you ponder on your answer ok you're going to sing it yeah ok cool look at this stuff isn't it neat wouldn't you think my collection's complete wouldn't you think I'm a girl a girl who has everything look at this trove treasures untold how many <laughs> wonders can one cavern hold Look at her around here, you think. Sure, she's got everything. everything. I've got gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got wadzits and widget galore. You want thing of bobs? I got 20. But who cares? No big deal. I want, I want more. I want to go where the people go. People go. I want to. So, Something, <laughs> see them dancing, walking around on those. What do you call them again? Feet. <laughs> up where they run, up where they hide, up where they stay out there and go outside. What would life be if I could be part of the world? That was beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible <laughs> Connell Taylor. You had a very, very puzzled face about the last question, so I thought I'd give you an extended version of that. I only yeah. really meant to sing the first, sing the first uh, verse, but I got a bit carried away. I'm glad you I think I got on. some of it wrong as well. Well, who cares? It was beautiful either way. Uh, and I still haven't come up with an answer for it. I've, I mean, is it because Dana Scully, Dana's kind of a more interesting name and they wanted to keep up? Or was it because somehow Fox the TV company screwed them over somehow and so they wanted to put Fox in it or did the show move to Fox from a different thing and then they wanted to be like oh cheers Fox and then call them Fox I'll give you that really? Fox were the only channel they tried everyone Fox were the only show the only uh, company that would take on the show so as a, a tribute which uh, Chris Carter was very well known for citing all of his favourite sci-fi um, and literary heroes throughout the entire show mm. named him Fox as a thank you to the Fox Network. Wow, after all they've done some Joss Whedon as well. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm glad I got that one kind of right. So does that mean you got them all right? Um, well, you I did? don't know. Let's just check the uh, Owenometer. <laughs> hey! Question six. What uh, was the name of the song I sung? Um, part of Your World. Yes. Play it again. <laughs> Okay, alright, here, oh no I can't, I'll have to set it all up again. That was well done to Owen, who for the first time since we started a quiz, which I think has been about six, seven weeks, mm. um, got full marks. Whee! Well done, I will build a statue of you. Oh good, could it be made out of... Uh, Your hair. Yeah, cool. I've collected most of it in there. In your boxes? Yes, that's where not my skin okay so uh, swiftly moving on next we're going to tell you about all of the new stuff that is coming out but first let's have a little bit of a sexy dance zhu 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 be do be zhu be do be do there we go I hope you're all joining in with our sexy dance now next up we'll be talking about all of the new telly and some of the new comics out this week and then we're going to heartlessly spoil them for you Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Beep. In Quantum Leap, uh, Sam Beckett never actually makes it out. Shut up! 
So we are going to spoil a bunch of stuff, like we just spoiled Quantum Leap for you if you haven't watched it. And if you haven't watched it, what have you been doing all this time? So, um, yeah, so from a an excellent um, uh, suggestion on our YouTube for what to chat about, uh, is the incredible Seasoned Reviews, who are an amazing uh, YouTube channel who do um, animated reviews of TV and film, and they're absolutely incredible. Please check them out and subscribe. And they suggested, what if we chatted a little bit about the new Netflix, uh, straight to Netflix, Daredevil series, which ingeniously all came out at once, so you could just sit at home and rinse through the entire thing on a, a, you know, on a, on a hangover day. Netflix, or just a day. Oh, like a revolution for TV. It's they, really good. Yeah, they really are great. And it's and there's so many little things like like they're doing this uh, the Daredevil one now, and then there's gonna be a Luke Cage one. Well, I think it might be called Power Man. I'm not sure. But there's gonna be a Luke Cage one, and then there's AKA Jessica Jones, which is coming out as well, which is gonna be even cooler uh, because David Tennant will be playing the Purple Man in it, as I think we've mentioned before on the show. And he, well, we've seen him be a baddie in Harry Potter. He's pretty sinister then. But as the purple man, who's someone who manipulates and controls people like puppets, there's very little that's more sinister than that, at least in mainstream comics. Especially with how, like, what he does. Like, some, pe- some people might, uh, what was it called um, that Voldemort did when he... Was it like the Cruciatus Curse? When he... Cruciatus oh. was pain, Avadica Rabda. Cadaver. Cadaver. Was murder. Oh yeah, it was the uh, Imperio, Imperius, when he controls people. And he didn't really do that that much evil. I don't think like make them kill or stuff, but like not like the Purple Man. Mm. So killing is pretty evil. The Purple Man went to some extremes with some longevity of this control. Yeah, yeah, definitely pretty. Uh, yeah, I'm excited right. to see David Tennant. Like Harry Potter, it's I completely love it and will fight to the end to like say how good it is but it's still a kids film yeah and although I mean, David Tennant was quite sinister in it he wasn't in it very much hmm. um, as far as like the kind of the, the, the baddies in the Harry Potter series goes he I think he's I was going to say overlooked but no I don't, I don't think he is overlooked I think he's just he's kind of a minor baddie isn't he he just kind of turns up he is. messes up everyone's stuff and then goes away this is why I'm very excited to see him play pure evil yeah. Like actual evil. No yeah. doubt about it. No, this is not a kid show. Evil. Mm. Warped, rapey, weird evil. evil. Yeah, it's going to be pretty rough. But yeah, Daredevil. Now, I'm not going to spoil it very much of it for you because I can't. I've only watched the first three and they were very, very good. Now, uh, Daredevil, if any of you don't know, um, a quick rundown of him is he is a vigilante, like most superheroes. He's blind, uh, but he has heightened sens- uh, senses, so he's got a kind of almost like a radar sonar thing going on, um, and he's very very ninjury as well. He's quite a spry chap, so he's very good at nipping about and um, and fighting crime uh, in Hell's Kitchen. And he's he really does take it to the streets. He's kind of like a bit of a brawler in that respect. Brought up by his father, who was a uh, boxer, and he's a massive Catholic as well. Well, not massive. You know, he, you know, he's, he's very into his Catholicism is what I was going with there um, yeah so in the first the first three you get a very uh, a very stark contrast I think of uh, of daredevil stuff so on the one hand you've got Daredevil kind of playing his trade learning his trade if you will of going out and beating the hell out of criminals that um, that escape justice if you will you know they go through the legal system and through a loophole or just a very good defence lawyer they manage to get off the hook even though everybody knows full well that they are very very naughty criminals that need to be to um, to face justice so he takes it upon himself to go out and beat him up perhaps not the most ethical way but you know it works uh, but in the daytime he is a lawyer um, and he's got to kind of keep up his cover as Matt Murdock the, um, the blind lawyer by it been a bit of a bumbling kind of, uh, kind of almost happy-go-lucky. No, not quite happy-go-lucky. That's Foggy Nelson, his partner in crimes thing. Is he quite similar to Clark Kent? Yes, yeah. That's a very, very, very good um, comparison. Uh, and yeah, and he's played by, interestingly, he's played by Tristan, uh, the character Tristan in um, in Stardust, the Neil Gaiman film. Well, the Neil Gaiman book adapted into a film. Uh, yeah, that's the last time I saw him in anything. But um, yeah, he, he plays it really well. Uh, Foggy Nelson, who is his kind of bumbling, oafish, loyal mate, uh, who he sets up his law firm with, 
It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, the casting on that is absolutely spot on because that guy just uh, embodies everything I've ever read of, of Foggy Nelson. Is like his little. It's all, all like the comic foil. Um, yeah, it was this very kind of enthusiastic kind of go getter, but it just it's just a very very human character, which balances all this other superhuman stuff that Daredevil's doing in, in the meantime out perfectly. So, you get, so like I said, you get this huge contrast of like day to day lawyer stuff. And uh, you know, nighttime BT up stuff. But I mean, I'll make this brief. But the the absolute pinnacle of it for me was um, at the end of the second episode. Uh, without spoiling anything very much, there's an epic fight scene, which I think I mentioned last time, because it is absolutely amazing. And I think I convinced Connell that he should probably watch Daredevil because I think you said after I described that that the kind of slug out with several opponents that keep on getting knocked down and getting back up and Daredevil made it sound like Merv from uh, Sin City yeah 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 some sold anything like Frank Miller-esque I want to I want to see yeah and it is and the series so far is very noir uh, one criticism I would have of it uh, is only a kind of stylistic choice thing really is that it's so noir that um, that you literally can't see anything they've, they've done the whole like dark and gritty thing and okay, it's night time, and Daredevil is currently wearing a black, uh, a black suit. Although we see how long, we'll see how long that lasts. Um, but yeah, so it does mean that unless you have the brightness turned up on your monitor a hell of a lot, you really can't see very much when it comes to like the dark, rainy fight scenes. You've got to get a bit squinty on it. That's a bit annoying. There's a lot. There's a lot of shows like that in the past eighteen months, two years. Which like um, what was it called? Hannibal. Oh like, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of Hannibal. That's not fair. I love the first season less towards the end than I did at the start. The second season I watched because I watched the first and I was bored throughout and I think I finished it. I can't remember. And one of the things that which annoyed me um, oh so much was how pointlessly dark it was. Like I was li- watching it um, legally so there should be no problems there. Not that I would have watched anything illegally. No. Who did that? But so there should be no problems and I was squinting at the screen like it was a decent TV should I be moving the angle of it no hmm. why, why is the film so darkly and difficult to see it annoys the bejeebus out of me yeah well it's, it's not it's not great is it um, I mean I like noir is a fantastic way to shoot I, I love noir the style of noir for everything even the word noir yeah. I would stroke the word noir if it was a cat yeah I just like so a would black I. cat but black and white cat right yeah I'd be up for that, but Funny why? Sh- but why shoot like that? Yeah, it, it does seem a little bit inconvenient. I mean, it's, it's a stylistic thing, so you know, at the end of the day, to each their own. But since we are here and our voices are being heard by people, and we can we can make these make these um, damning judgments of TV shows, then Daredevil so far is absolutely awesome. You should definitely watch it, but it's a bit dark. <laughs> Not dark in a good way. Dark in a squinty way. Yeah, dark in the squintiest of ways. Um, so, ladies and gents, that is the end of our spoiler alert for now. I hadn't read the new Buffy comic, otherwise I'll be spoiling the tits off that for you. Talking about Buffy. Oh, yeah. I think we've got something coming up next, which is going to be the best randomly selected actor of the week. For any Joss Whedon fans, right? Me. Is it you? It's me. I have actually hidden my identity for all of these episodes. I am... Who? Who? What? Oh, oh! You didn't warn me about that. All right, okay. We'll just do that again. Go on, go. On, you start. <laughs> I've hidden my identity for all of these episodes. In actual fact, I am a tardis noise. Hey Owen, should we talk about a randomly selected actor of the week? Yeah, all right. Nathan Fillion. Hey, <laughs> that was the best build-up. So uh, yeah, so let's talk about Nathan Fillion on our randomly selected actor of the week section. Um, I went on. I've just I've got his IMDb up. I don't really know why, because I think between the both the two of us, we probably know everything, every hair on his head. He is he is a dreamboat, isn't he? His, I mean, I'm I'm friends with him on Facebook. Good. His actual Facebook. He has about three hundred and fifty friends, and I'm one of them. I think he's got me confused with someone. But it's <laughs> genuine. 
It's <laughs> amazing. So yeah. like, Carl Taylor, yeah, I must have met a Connor at some point. Yeah, cool, okay. I sent, I sent him an invitation to Geek Night. He didn't come. Oh, what a meanie. <laughs> yeah, I tried that with Anthony Stewart Head. He, <laughs> yeah. He didn't come either. Did uh, we actually ask him to come and do a... Uh, no, no, I didn't ask him to do anything. Just just turn up. <laughs> It'd be nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Nathan Fillion, though. We, one thing I want to get into that I haven't properly given a go yet is Castle, hmm. where he yeah where he plays this writer and then ends up being a kind of uh, consulting detective. Um, I've watched uh, one or two. The same. I've watched the first couple and then I watched one a bit later on uh, at somebody's house, whatever. But um, yeah, it looked really good, really cheesy, really funny. But I think after watching the first two and then watching one a little bit later on, it was a bit disjointed. I reckon it uh, could really benefit from literally just sitting down and rinsing a few episodes at once, maybe with a takeaway. I find they talk too fast. Oh. Which happens a lot in American shows. Yeah, and especially like kind of crime scene investig... I've got to make sure I don't speak quickly now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spe- especially in crime scene investigation shows where what, everyone's like, like, we need everything stat. I think it originated from the West Wing when they were had like 90% of dialogue was walking between meetings like... Have you heard about this? But you don't know about this. Here's the in joke from this week. And oh, I don't know. But what are you wearing? And everyone's going on. But did you know the government has just collapsed? But you didn't know about this joke that went on this week. And everybody's here. But we're in this meeting now. So let's talk about this. What were we saying in the last one? I don't know. Beating. Yeah. So uh, so Nathan Fillion, one of his strengths is talking very quickly. <laughs> also, I think Nathan Fillion, one of my favourite um, uh, characters Nathan Fillion ever played was uh, Caleb. Oh, yeah. Because that he was... That was a strong character, yeah. and he was a mu- he's a much loved guy from what I've read and seen, as much on set as off. Um, characters love him. Uh, sorry, uh, viewers love him. Cast seem to love him when they're shooting with him. Directors love him. He's just a really friendly guy and fun to work with, and always having a laugh. And yeah. then just to like <clears throat> turn around and talk about women in the atrocious way he did, and break like yeah, do a teenage lot. girls' necks like and smile and laugh about it. Poke Xander's eye out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Though, and that's what was scary about him. He was, he was such an unassuming and approachable character. Even though you, you know, he was, you know, from the from the off, you pretty much knew after that little lead up with the the truck drive, you found out pretty quickly that he was evil. But before that, he was just such an unassuming guy who just sort of would say preachy things and yeah, and yeah. he half enjoyed but half didn't care what he was doing. Yeah, it was, it was creepy and really, really well done. Yeah, proper detached mentalist, but um. Yeah, and, and I heard he was in this. I mean, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard he was in this um, little-known sci-fi thing. Like, I, I don't think it was taken seriously. Um, but he was. I mean, they 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 showed it on some backwater TV channel. They but they played all the episodes in the wrong order. Something about a spaceship, and they were flying about. Uh, Star Trek. Yeah, was he was he in that? Yeah. Oh, Firefly. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Firefly. Yeah. So uh, of course he was in that. Uh, as Captain Malcolm Reynolds, he aims to misbehave. Captain Tight Pants. Uh, he well, obviously we've uh, if we've already told you our feelings about Firefly. They're positive as a recap. We like Firefly very much. Uh, so much so that Connell is writing it on his chest as we speak. Uh, his bare chest, might I add. If anyone's on uh, webcam, check it out. He's got a medium hairy chest, um, mostly around the nipples. So. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, but yeah, Firefly, uh, yeah, Space Cowboys, absolutely brilliant. If anyone who's listening hasn't watched it, I know everyone, everyone, geeky says you should probably watch it because it's amazing. Uh, and I don't want to go down that road. I want to say uh, you should probably watch it. It's amazing. See, I did it in a different accent, so it doesn't count. In all seriousness, seriousness, um, every geek out there, um, is, is what a geek is, uh, like certain things immensely. And, yeah. Um, so all of them are going to go. Yeah, but you really should watch it about everything they like. From a objective point of view, if you're to get into sci-fi, like watch a few things. I reckon if it was up to me, I'd say watch Doctor Who, Battlestar Galactica, and Star Trek. I think they're a good three, like a good rounded. Choose which sort of sci-fi you like. Mm. Watch Firefly. It co- it ticks so many boxes. Even if you're not into sci-fi, I, I like my mum. I watched uh, uh, my over like last Christmas or two Christmases ago. All the trains got cancelled. My mum was up to visit, mm. so she came back to mine and she didn't know what to do with her. So I'd put Firefly on because what else do you do? Uh, and she loved it. 
Did she really? Like, she's... I think she's heard of sci-fi and has seen a Doctor Who at Christmas and kind of slept through it. And then I put Firefly on and she started asking me questions, getting excited and being a bit, like, that there, that... Like, admired towards Captain Mar Reynolds and... Like, Brilliant. Every, everyone, everyone likes it. It ticks so many boxes. It's space cowboys uh, fighting for the good of everyone beautiful brown coat brilliance a man's gotta do what a man's gotta do don't plan the plan if you can't follow through all that matters taking matters into your own hands Soon I'll control everything. My wish is your command. Stand back, everyone. Nothing here to see. Just in and a danger in the middle of it. Me, yes. Captain Hammer's here, here, blowing in the breeze. The day means my saving expertise. Man's got it through water, man's. So, Nathan Fillion. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, he voiced a uh, monstrous inmate. He was in Robot Chicken. I didn't know he was in Robot Chicken. Amazing. Recently, he's been in Big Bang Theory, isn't he? Yeah, I didn't. I, that episode was strange. It was when uh, Howard Wolowitz's mum died, and in that, the reason why they did that was because the character actually died, um, and she kind of looked after him on set a bit, even though you never actually met her. Uh, so it was all kind of true what they were saying, like about uh, mm. missing her, like. Every, well, everything they said around the table was pretty genuine, which made it quite a like a heartwarming episode. I'm not I'm not a massive fan of the Big Bang Theory, but my girlfriend really likes it, so I watched quite a few with her, and I've gotten into it. It's like Scrubs; it's really good. Stick anything on background viewing, occasional giggle, like Friends was when we were too young to realise it was rubbish. <laughs> rubbish. Rubbish. Uh, but yeah, that was really good. So fair play. Um, Serenity, obviously. We haven't talked about Serenity. Yeah. I think we should do it in a minute, though. I think we should, too. Uh, uh, in fact, we, we can do that for our geek scene and beyond. Um, but first up, first up, we've, we've got a little something to say about, uh, about a, uh, a random... Here it is! Uh, Wolverine's bones are made of chocolate. What if Doctor Who used his powers to evil? Oh, what if the Simpsons were all topless? What if Bruce Banner never went to school? What, what if? Shut up! Niche Radio tells you what if. We sure do, and we'll be telling you what if in just one second after this commercial break. This is Fab Radio International. <laughs> We've never had a commercial break before. <laughs> yeah, no, I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, what if? Now, this week, we haven't prepared a what if. So the what if is what if we hadn't prepared a what if for the uh, radio. And this is it. So I've got a good um, one for this, which okay. I've literally just thought about now, so it works out quite well. Mm-hmm. Why don't we throw back uh, potential storylines for whoever, for example. what like There's loads of films like, what if uh, Batman fell into the universe with uh, Predator? And aliens, yeah, yeah, that's an awesome uh, little short, isn't it? I watched that today. The guy from the <coughs> View who was going to get me in last night um, befriended me and sent me that. Oh, nice! It yeah. was good. Have you seen the um, Batman versus Darth Vader one, which is going around at the moment? Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, that epic is. as well. Brutal at the end. Darth Vader's face, which is always creepy. Ooh, it is indeed. So, so what if? Um, well, those are just kind of like. Uh, that's almost like who would win in a fight, though, isn't it? But what if? What if lightsabers were real? Oh, yeah, what if they were? There'd be loads of accidents, wouldn't there? I reckon there'd be more accidents than people using them correctly, like guns. Yeah, and we'd need, we'd need to um, we need to develop some sort of new battery, because I imagine that they take up a lot of battery power. Yeah, they're, they're, they've never really gone into detail about that, have they? No. I wonder if they will in the new ones. Yeah, just explain how it all works. Yeah, we came up with the battery, and then we turned it into a sword with handle, because we're stupid. Yeah, that is that is kind of weird, isn't it? It is. I like the um, I, I like a good double ender. So <laughs> Darth Maul was excellent. Yeah, but if lightsabers really exist, 
I don't know if we reuse them that much because realistically we don't use melee weapons in the armed forces really at all. No. Would, would police carry lightsabers? No, no, I don't, well, unless it was trench ones. They carry batons. Yeah, but that's to hit people on the head. Uh, a lightsaber in the same context would slice someone in half. Yes, yeah, so they wouldn't, would they? I don't yeah. think we would use them. Yeah. I mean, I, I Imagine if a policeman came up to you with a lightsaber. I'm just like, yeah, no, no, whatever, whatever you're trying to arrest me for, it's fine. Did you just drop your cigarette butt? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or have you got a light, mate? <laughs> Even Burn better. your face off. <laughs> So yeah, so what What if they existed? They'd be kind of ineffectual. Is that the uh, Is that the kind of... I don't think we could realistically use them because we use projectiles as opposed to melee weapons. And we do. And it's getting to the point now in a war that we barely even use those. You know, if a big war came around, we'd just be using lightsaber bombs instead. Oh, that was a depressing one. The state of the world, man. If lightsabers existed in night times, though, that would be cool. That would be much better. The population would be a lot less, though. So, I mean, okay, cold steel going through you, that's not going to do very well for you. But lightsabers, I think, will just, you know, they just sear through you, wouldn't they? It's very true. Um, uh, I'm trying to okay. think of another uh, a what if. Lightsabers, mm. lightsabers are always good. What if the weapons are badass in sci fi? The blasters in Star Wars. Phases are batleths by the Klingons. Though, you see, if you've got a batleth, that's pretty much the big sword that looks cool. That is. Oh, what if um, what are they called? Not replicators. That Stargate with the uh, little spider things mm. uh, that create food in replicators. Stargate. Is it replicators? Mm. If they existed, that would be awesome. With is it synthanol? Synthahol is the one in next gen that they uh, they have. It kind of gives you all the the positives of alcohol, but without the negatives. Realistically, if we had that, we would have a planet full of alcoholics. We would. Well, we don't already. <laughs> Even worse. Yeah. Well, we would, but they, but they wouldn't be the same, though, because all it does is kind of makes you a little bit happy, I, th- I think. That's, that's the only gist I get from Synthahol. Do you not get... I thought it was just no hangovers. Do you still, like, get fall over drunk? No, you're not, you're not meant to. You're not meant to get any of the kind of loss of control or, or like, that, uh, or the lowered inhibitions. None, none of that. You just kind of become a bit more confident and happy. That's the whole point of alcohol. So you go on the radio, take your shirt off, and sing The Little Mermaid. Yeah. So, so Synthahol... What are these... So synthahol, if it existed, would be sh- largely shunned, I think, by the population. As, of course, a few years later in Deep Space Nine, it is shunned because Quark's bar sells alcohol instead of synthahol. Excellent. Yeah, good. I like that. Nice one. So, uh, if you're tuning in to Niche Radio, thank you very much. We're your hosts, Owen and Connell, and we like to tell you about geeky things. And if you'd like to tell us about some geeky things, please get in touch. Find our Mixcloud, Niche Radio, or get in touch on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. And uh, next up, we will be discussing who would win in a fight between Iron Man and Batman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the title fight, the greatest moment in superhero versus supervillain history. In the red corner, the almighty, the upstanding pillar of all that is good, and in the blue corner, the devious, the Machiavellian, the dastardly loser of all time. Who would win in a fight? You decide. Ready? Fight. Ready? Fight. Ready? Uh, Ready? Uh, Fight. (laughs) Fight. So last week we talked about uh, Andy's cosplay magic. We did indeed, yeah. Um, and as a result, he went on our YouTube and said, "Lovely, sure, thanks very much, Andy." Thank he you. then suggested a who would win in a fight between Iron Man and Batman, which I think we did talk about on one of our first shows, actually. But considering that was nearly a year ago now, and the Avengers came out, well, it's coming out tomorrow, and. Batman is doing a whole heap of stuff at the moment. He is. Doing fighting Predator and Alien and Darth Vader, it seems, on the internet. He's a busy guy. We should probably talk about this. Because in that... In the one with uh, Predator, Alien was inconsequential. He ran like he ran when he saw Predator and Batman together. Or rather, Predator, I suppose. But Batman he... kind of took down Predator. Which annoyed me a bit, and quite easily. And with his weapons. But then at the end, he's cornered between the two. He's cornered between more when they come along, yeah. Yeah. But he did take down Predator. I mean, it took Arnie a whole film. Arnie had to get really grubby. Yeah, he had to cover himself in mud. Bruce Wayne isn't as badass as Arnold Schwarzenegger, flat out. Hmm, okay. Yeah. But Batman is. He's like the, one of the strongest man, men in the world, and 
He's got a great accent. Governor of California. And he's got a great accent. And he's got a great accent. Oh, and he's got a tank that he likes to smash stuff with. And he's got a pet goat which he feeds in his kitchen when he has breakfast. (laughs) Neat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, donkey. Sorry, not goat. It's a donkey. Ah, donkey's goats. They're all the same to me. They're not really. (laughs) I I can tell the difference between a donkey and a goat. Honest. Honest, I can. So who win the fight between Iron Man and Batman? Well, that's a strong case for Batman. I mean, he's beating that predator. He's, he's, yeah. I mean, and he's. He took on oh, Darth Vader. He didn't win, but he took him on. Fair play. Yeah. And over the years, he has defeated loads and loads of, of massive baddies, and he's had his back broken before. Um. Yeah, and come back from it, which is is pretty good going. What's the worst Iron Man's been through? The whole um reason why he became Iron Man was pretty brutal, and he got out of that and was successful. So fair play. Yeah. But other than that, what bad things has he been through? Well, he's been he's been around for so long in the Marvel comics that he's done pretty much everything. He's gone to space and had fights with Galactus, and he's had fights with pretty much I every fought Galactus. I've not read uh, those. Yeah, I'm, well, the Avengers have fought. He's not fought him solo, as far as I know. Although perhaps Iron Man has tried to take on Galactus solo, and I've just not read it. But it seems unlikely because yeah, the Avengers have fought him a few times and pretty much nearly been defeated. So, so who I'm, do you reckon? Hmm. Well, Iron Man's got the great suit. Bat- uh, Batman's got all the batarangs and extra gubbins. They're both very well trained, but Batman takes his training a lot more seriously. Yeah, I think Batman's more brutal as a human, whereas mm. Iron Man needs a suit. So as he's intelligent and resourceful, he would find a way of putting down his suit, meaning he would win him ultimately. Mm. Well, then again, Bruce Wayne's very uh, resourceful as well because he's invented all these gadgets and stuff. Oh, no, I, so, I think he would. Oh, oh, sorry, you think he'd be more resourceful, yeah. Yeah, if he, if he took out Iron Man's suit, it's just... Tony Stark and he's not going to win in a fight is he no he'd probably have some like some shark repellent like Iron Man repellent <laughs> well okay so we think Batman then overall I'm saying so yeah okay I think I'll agree with that but that's all the time we have for today folks thank you very much for tuning in to Niche Radio and that's a goodbye from me Owen and a goodbye from him no no I've already said goodbye from Owen oh hello goodbye <laughs> don't quote Beatles oh we're going to have to rehearse this <sighs> Well, thank you very much, folks. It's been a lovely show. Please I hope get in touch. The <laughs> and coming up next is uh, a little bit of news, and then the Steve Berry show. And maybe later on, we'll treat you to some more Connell singing nice songs.